Hey friends, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be taking you along as I work on some homemaking and cleaning things around my house because one, I need to clean my house and two, I need to make a video. So I'm going to be working on some cleaning, deeper cleaning things that really need to get done and also a couple of homemaking things like making some homemade snacks for the week and I might even show you a little bit of behind the scenes for an article that I'm working on for the Hillsider magazine because I need to take some photos for that publication today. Let's get to work. So while I'm working on some of these homemaking tasks, I wanted to take a minute to offer some encouragement for other homemakers. Now, before I talk about that specific encouragement, I don't think that you have to be a stay-at-home mom to be a homemaker. The reason that I say that is if you look at the actual definition of homemaking, it doesn't say anything about whether you have to stay home or if you can work outside of the home. The definition of homemaking is the creation and management of a home, especially as a pleasant place in which to live. So whether you are working inside of your home, outside of your home, or a combination, you can be a homemaker and you can create a safe and loving and welcoming place in your home. Homemaking matters. The things that you do to make your home feel safe and cozy and a place that people want to be has an impact. There's a quote by Sally Clarkson from her book, The Life-Giving Home, that I wanted to share because I really resonate with these words and it really helped me feel encouraged and to find purpose in the work that I do each day for my family. But my parents understood that the world that they made within the walls of our house was what constituted home. So I grew up in spaces framed by art and color, filled with candlelight marked by beauty. I grew up within a rhythm of time made sacred by family devotions in the morning and long conversations in the evening. I grew up with a sense of our daily life as a feast and delight, a soup and bread dinner by the fire, Celtic music lilting in the shadows, and the laughter of my siblings gave me a sense of the blessedness of love of God's life made tangible in the food and touch and air of our home. It was a fight for my parents, I know. Every day was a battle to bring order to mess, peace to stressful situations, beauty to the chaos wrought by four young children. But that's the reality of incarnation as it invades a fallen world. What my parents, bless them, knew is that to make a home right in the midst of the fallen world is to craft out a space of human flesh and existence in which eternity rises up in time, in which the kingdom comes, in which we may taste and see the goodness of God. In continuation of what I was sharing before, I want to encourage you that home homemaking doesn't have to and shouldn't look the same for every family. I just want to encourage you that your, the way that you choose to run your home doesn't have to look the same as everybody else. You don't have to wear a dress every day to be a good homemaker. You don't have to cook every meal from scratch to be a good homemaker. You need to do what meets the needs of the people who live within your home. If those things don't matter to you, then focus on what does. Creating a home and a place that feels safe and welcoming for your family and others who enter is going to look different for every family and that's okay. So what I'm working on right now is I am creating a homemade tallow bomb. I wrote an article about this for the Hillsider magazine and it's a, an edition that talks about making household products from clean ingredients. So I decided to share how I turned the beef fat from our cattle order earlier this year into a homemade tallow bomb for my skin. And I've been using it for several days now and my skin has drastically improved. It feels much softer, a lot less dry. And I didn't show the entire process in this video. I just showed the final steps to turning it into a skincare product from the tallow. But I will put a link in the description box below to that magazine for when it comes out. It'll be a couple months. 
and then also a link to my social media page where I shared about how to make this a step-by-step -step process. One of my goals this year is to start making a lot of our bread products or even snacks from scratch. I'm not doing all of that right now, but I'm gradually adding to what I know how to do. So today I'm gonna to be working on making homemade granola. My kids love it, my husband and I love it, and it's honestly really easy and so much cheaper than buying it at the store. You also have more control of the ingredients that go in it and you can customize it to what you or your family likes. So I'm gonna show you a really simple, plain, basic recipe and then I'm going to show you how I make it in bulk and seal it so that it will last for the next week. So we buy a lot of our dry goods in bulk and I'm going to grab our oats. Um, we really need to paint our kitchen. We never painted it when we moved in, so this is looking a bit rough, but you know, it's okay. It does the job, it holds the jar. So. Another piece of encouragement that I want to offer for the homemaker is that it takes time. I've started to cook from scratch a lot more for my family since we bought a lot of our food in bulk this year. And sometimes, sometimes things turn out really well and other times it's kind of a flop. But sometimes it's easy for me to compare to other people who have been cooking from scratch their entire life and I'm relatively new and I'm very much learning. So I just want to encourage you, don't compare where you are. To somebody else. It takes time and those little skills add up. What I'm doing right here is I'm turning oats from Azure Standard from our bulk food order into homemade granola for my family. My kids especially really love granola but it's pretty expensive when you buy it at the store and there's often a lot of additives and other things in it and you can make it at home for really inexpensive. If you're interested in buying bulk food, I highly recommend checking out Azure Standard. They offer non-GMO and organic foods and I have had an incredible experience with them and switching to buying our food in bulk has saved us so much in the long run. It does have more of an upfront cost, but we are saving hundreds each month on our groceries. I'll put a link to this recipe below but what I used for this, which is a double batch, I used four cups of granola, four, or not granola, four cups of oats, four teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of salt, four tablespoons of oil. You can use olive or coconut or whatever you prefer. A third a cup of honey and a third a cup of maple syrup and then more if needed. So it's relatively simple. You can also add in things like chocolate chips or nuts or cranberries if your family likes that, but my family prefers it pretty simple. And then you're going to put it on a piece of parchment paper and bake it at 300 degrees for 15 minutes. Then you flip and turn it as fast as you can and then repeat for 15 more minutes. So while this is baking in the oven, I'm going to work on my photos for the Hillsider magazine. While I was filming this, my mom was helping with my kids for a couple of hours and I was trying to multitask and get as much done as I could in a short amount of time. So when I write articles for magazines, I typically do the writing first and then I will go back and photograph. and. I don't have a fancy studio. I don't even have a super nice camera. It's an old one from when I took a photography class in college, but it works and it does the job. You have to have good lighting. And so I'm taking the photos by a window in my front room because it gets the best lighting. And then I just pulled some different dried flowers and vases and baskets from around my house to add some interest to the photos.
So once the granola is done, I allowed it to cool and I'm going to put half of it in a mason jar to use this week and just put a regular lid on it. And then the second one, I'm going to use a vacuum sealer that I got from Mason King recently. It's an automatic one and it's incredibly easy to use. It's done within less than a minute. And so I'm just going to spoon the granola in there. And the reason that I'm doing this is because by sealing it, it will stay fresh longer and I'll also be less likely to eat it all at once. I really wanted to save this for next week so that I don't, I don't have to make as much because some weeks are busier than others. I spend a lot of time cooking for my family, but if I can do a double batch, it does save me quite a bit of time. This is the vacuum sealer you put it on and you press the button and it will let you know when it's done. I like to check it to make sure it's sealed and put a band around it. And then I store it in my cabinet till I'm ready to use it. I know there are times where homemaking can feel really monotonous and sometimes boring, but I want to encourage you that the meals that you make, the cleaning that you do, the creating snacks that your family loves, caring for your home, it matters. But I also think that it has more of an impact if we can find a way to have joy in it. And so I encourage you to, like that Sally Clarkson quote said before, Remember that homemaking can have eternal significance. So I encourage you to listen to what the Lord is calling you to in this season, to focus on what brings your family joy, and also to try not to worry about what everyone else is doing. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.